Worship. We are your hosts for today, Isabella, Kayla, and Chani. Hey guys, are you guys doing the Count Your Blessings campaign? Yeah, I realized that there is so much more for me to be thankful for than I thought. Me too. I never knew how blessed I am. Well, today we are starting at a little different. What do you mean different? Today, we will be playing fun review game. Woo! So is everyone ready to play the review game? I hope all of you watched all the videos before. We'll give you five seconds to answer each question. Well, let's begin with the first question. Why do we worship God? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, time's up. If she said that it was because we were created to worship him, you are correct. Next question. What kind of worship is accepted by God? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, time's up. If you said that true, wholehearted worship is accepted, you are correct. Okay, next question. How do we prepare our hearts for worship? Five, four, three, two, one. One, okay, time's up. If you said looking at our words, actions, and thought before worship, you're correct. Okay, this is our last question. How do we know that our love for God is real? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, time's up. If she said that showing our love through our words, actions, thoughts, and worship in our daily lives is true, Love for God, you are correct. Wow, that was so much fun. I know, I can't believe we learned so much these past couple weeks. Me too. So let's make sure to look at our words, actions, and thoughts as we worship today. Are you guys ready for worship? Yeah. Okay, let's go. So now we're going to start our worship, and we're going to start it off with the Apostles' Creed. If you've already memorized it, you can close your eyes and try to recite it with us. But if you don't know, you can recite along with us and try to memorize. This is our confession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
favorite verse is 1 John 3, 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Abraham's son Isaac grew up and married Rebecca. When Rebecca was pregnant, God told her that she would have two boys. God said, they will grow up and have families who will be the two separate nations. One nation will be stronger than the other, and the older child will serve the younger. Rebecca gave birth to twins. Esau was born first and then Jacob. When they grew up and their father Isaac was old, Isaac wanted to bless Esau. Instead, Jacob tricked Esau and stole his brother's blessing. Esau was very angry, so Isaac and Rebekah sent Jacob away. One night, God spoke to Jacob, I am the God of your grandfather Abraham, and the God of your father Isaac. I will give you and your offspring this land. God made the same covenant with Jacob as he had made with Abraham. God said, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. Jacob promised to follow God and honor him. Years passed. Jacob got married and had a family. Finally, Jacob took his family and all his possessions and headed home to Canaan. Jacob was afraid that Esau would still be angry with him for stealing his blessing. He sent a large gift of animals to try to make Esau happy. That night, a man appeared to Jacob. The man wrestled with Jacob all night. Jacob refused to give up. So the man injured Jacob's hip. I will not let you go unless you bless me, Jacob said. Your name will no longer be Jacob, said the man. Your name will be Israel, because you wrestled with God and men, and you have won. The man blessed Jacob. Now Jacob went to meet Esau. Esau ran to Jacob and hugged him. He was not angry anymore. Esau returned to his home. Jacob and his family traveled on, and Jacob bought land for them to live on. Jacob was finally home in the land God had promised him. God changed Jacob's life and gave him a new name, Israel. Jesus came that we might have a changed life, forgiven of sin. Jesus' death and resurrection provided sinful people the way to be adopted into God's family. When we trust in Jesus, we also receive a new name, children of God. Hi everybody, welcome back again to our sermon portion. And I want to welcome everyone who's joining us. And as we dive into the Word of God today, I hope uh, that everyone is blessed so that we can be a blessing unto others. Now let's dive right into the Word of God for today. The Word of God for today comes from John chapter 14, verse 6. It says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's pray. Father, as we go into your word, as we dive into the scriptures, I pray that you would illuminate it for us so that we can not just learn it in our minds, not just know it by information, but we will know it by transformation, that we would actually live out these words in our lives. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, as you guys are aware, last week we talked about the starting of this sermon series, which is called the power of words. We talked about how words have the power of life and death. The way you speak to others, the way you choose your words, it actually has an effect uh, in your lives. It changes the trajectory of your life. Now, we're going to be a little more specific today uh, in terms of what kind of words are said. And we're going to be dealing with the topic of lying. Not lying down in your bed, but lying as in not telling the truth. You see, I have some experience of this thing called lying, and you and I know that, and everyone knows, that lying isn't something that you need to be taught. It's something that we could just kind of naturally do for whatever reason. 
Now, when I was in elementary school, when I was in about third or fourth grade, there was this brand new game, a uh, video game that came out uh, called Mortal Kombat. Now, this was a super violent game, and usually a kid wouldn't have it. Uh, but all the friends, all my friends, were talking about how uh, they wanted it and how uh, awesome this game was. And I don't know what came over me. I don't know what it was. If I really think about it, it was probably because I kind of wanted to fit in or wanted to be cool. So I just went, "Oh, guys, um, I got it. By the way, the other day, my mom bought it for me." Hmm. And everyone was like, what? No way. That's so cool. Your mom bought you Mortal Kombat. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's right. And I remember one of my friends said, oh, let me come over tonight. And I was like, uh, oh, um, sh sure, sure, of course, of course. And I remember thinking, oh, man, I'm so nervous. You know, I don't really have the game, but I just lied about it. And uh, I remember I got a phone call and uh, my friend, Eddie, was like, hey, I'm coming over right now. We're nearby and we're going to come over. I was like, well, I just, uh. and then he hung up the phone. And at the whole, the whole time, I was so nervous. I couldn't tell my mom. And finally, they came home. Ding dong. And they came and the mom's like, oh, Eddie's been talking about this game that uh, John got and blah, blah. And then Eddie comes into uh, our house. And my mom was thinking, huh? <laughs> and at that time, to cover up my lies, guess what I had to do? cover up with more lies. And so I went, oh, um, that game, yeah, yeah, I uh, actually let uh, so-and-so borrow it. <laughs> and so it was disappointment, and obviously my mom knew that I had, I had been lying. And I remember thinking back then, why did I lie? Why did I have to lie? And so the question that we have to ask ourselves is whenever we are caught in a lie or whenever we are forced to or we're trying to lie, we have to talk about why. Why do we lie? You must know why you are lying. Maybe to get out of trouble, uh, maybe to cover up or hide some insecurities that you have, or to get something that you don't have. And we are naturally born professional liars. We lie without being taught to lie. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22, verse 223 says this, The Lord detests lying lips, but He delights in those who tell the truth. The wise don't make a show of their knowledge, but fools broadcast their foolishness. What's crazy here is God doesn't just say, um, lying is kind of bad. He says he detests, he hates lying. And the reason is because God is truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You see, lying has some consequences that we must deal with. Lying, uh, sometimes you lie to get out of trouble, and that will cause even more trouble for you later. Uh, maybe someone has lied about you, and we're going to kind of get into that in another week about gossip and such. Maybe someone spread lies about you, or you lied to someone and broke their trust. You see, our entire lives are built on trust systems, and lying breaks that trust and makes irreversible cracks in relationships. You see, when you and I begin to lie, it begins to break the very foundation of our lives, of the relationships and the trust that we have in each other. When people lie about someone else, then that hurts them and causes pain. And when that pain begins to grow, then that person who received the pain only gives pain out to others. What we say is hurt people, those who have been hurt, hurt people they begin to hurt others without even knowing it. When they've been lied to, it's natural for them to lie to others. You see, lying has very serious consequences. You see, a lot of times when we lie, we are disguising ourselves. We often disguise even our own lies. Genesis chapter 3 is, talks about uh, the time when the serpent tempted Adam and Eve. It says, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? You see, we don't flat out lie, but we twist the truth. We, we mislead people by it. Intentional lying, intentionally lying versus accidentally lying. You see, exaggerating to make yourself look good or better, or pretending to be someone you're not, saying one thing but doing the opposite. You see, a lot of times we might not uh, intentionally lie, but we may lie and we might put a deceit or disguise over ourselves because of whatever issues but that we must deal with deep down inside of our hearts. We must confront the truth. Now you might be thinking, why? Why do I need to confront the truth? Why can't I just lie all the time? And if I can cover up all my lies, then that's good. 
You see, we're so used to this, we're so familiar to this because it's all over social media, it's all over just the way that a lot of people live their lives. If you see this uh, one Instagram page, um, this background is a green screen, but this Instagrammer is constantly changing the background and making it look like he's traveling all over the world. In another Instagram post, there's a, a picture on the right is the actual photo, actual place, but on the left is a place where uh, uh, it's photoshopped and it's, ma it's made uh, to, it's, it looks really a lot better than it really is. And so for us, we disguise, we lie, we make ourselves look better uh, than we ought to. And the reason might be something deep down inside. You see, we are called to have a deep personal relationship with Jesus, with God, who is the truth. And when we are living far from the truth, then we are living far from God's will and his plan for us. Honesty is God's policy. You see, God is all about the truth, whereas Satan is all about lies. He is the father of lies. It began in Genesis when he lied about God, what God said to Adam and Eve, but it continues on. You see, Psalm 31, 5 says this, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, we've been talking about not lying, making sure that we speak the truth. But before all of that, once again, if you remember from last week, we have to be the right kind of people. It's not just about behavior modification, just choosing your words wisely and making the right words come out of your mouth. But the Word of God says, out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth speaks. And so instead of saying, oh, let me say the truthful things. If you walk out of this sermon, if you leave this sermon thinking, yeah, you know what? I'm going to just stop lying you know, from now on. I'm going to speak the truth. Then guess what? You've already failed. I know that sounds kind of harsh, but what we have to address is we have to be a truthful person in order to speak the truthful words. You see, in your heart, you might have deceit. In your heart, and deep down inside, you might be saying one thing to another person, but on the outside, you're going, ha ha, yeah, you're great, awesome. But that deceit, God says he despises. Truth needs to be who we are. You tell the truth even when it's hard. We own up to our mistakes, and we, we are to be the kind of person who can be trusted. Once again, boys and girls, when we are considering the power of words, we have seen how lying affects and has so many consequences in a negative way. But on the other hand, when you become, when you are a truthful person, then you are able to speak truthful words. More than anything, we are able to say, God, I hold on to your truth. I hold on to who you are, Jesus, and I want to be the kind of person who can be trusted by using the power of my words, not to lie, not to deceive, to deceive people, but to speak the truth in other people's lives and in my life as well. And we're going to close with this verse. It says, Psalm chapter 119, verse 9 through 11 says this, How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you have given us your word, your power of your word, the truth of your word. I pray that we would know and acknowledge that lying has severe consequences in our lives, uh, that it causes uh, a break in our trust and relationships. And I pray, Lord, that you would give us not just the truthful words, but a truthful heart, that our heart will be changed from the inside out, that we'll not just be thinking about or, or stressing about saying the right words, but we'll become the right people in order to say the right words and live a life that is pleasing to you. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, we'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>
That's a great question. If we turn to Genesis 2.18, it says, And the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. What does that have to do with naming the animals? Well, we all know that God could have named all the different kinds of animals in a split second. But God wanted to teach Adam and teach us a lesson. He wanted to show us that we are different from animals. Different? Yeah, God created us in his own image. We are a special creation from God that is totally different from the animals God created. Oh, that makes sense. But did Adam give each of the animals the names that we call them today? Yeah, like did Adam name the cows as cows back then? Or were they something completely different? That's such a good question. In Genesis 2.20 it says, So Adam gave names to all cattle to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. That means Adam named each kind of animal, not each and every variety and species. So you mean he just made the general names for each animal? That's right. For example, he named dogs as dogs, but not each individual kind of dog. We know a lot of the dogs by name, like Yorkies or Golden Retrievers, but Adam didn't name them like that. Also, we don't know what language Adam's spoken, so we can't fully tell if the names that the animals have right now are still the same. We don't know what language Adam spoke? No, we don't, especially after the Tower of Babel where all the languages got mixed up and confused people. We don't know if the language Adam used from all the different languages or if it even still exists. So we'll never know if it really is the same? That's right. Well, it was so nice learning about Adam and how he named the animals. Thank you for joining us this week for digging deeper into God's Word. We'll see you guys next week. Bye! Now it is time for Offering. Second service starts at 9 a.m. and third service starts at 11 a.m. Make sure to come out on time to play some fun memory verse games. The Bible Memory Contest will be held on December 5th, so make sure to memorize your memory verses so that you can earn 300 points and a huge trophy. Lastly, the Count Your Blessings campaign will be continuing throughout November, so make sure to write five things you're thankful for and why you're thankful for those things and bring it in on Sundays to get checked by your teachers so on November 28th, you can earn a huge reward. I hope you guys will think about your words, actions, and thoughts throughout this week. Bye! Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.